So you nervous about the fight? They're scared to death. You don't look scared? Well, you ain't supposed to. Then you don't have to do it. Yeah, well, I think I do. Y you know, living with you, it hasn't been easy. People see me, but they think of you. Now with all this going on, this is gonna be worse than ever. It don't have to be. No, sure it does. Why? You got a lot going on, kid. Oh, what, my last name? That's the reason I got a decent job. That's the reason why people deal with me in the first place. Now I start to get a little ahead. I start to get a little something for myself, and this happens. Now I'm asking you as a favor not to go through with this, okay? This is only gonna end up bad for you, and it's gonna end up bad for me. You think I'm hurting you? Yeah, in a way you are. It's the last thing I ever wanted to do. I know that's not what you want to do, but that's just the way that it is. Don't you care what people think? Doesn't it bother you that, that people are making you out to be a joke and that I'm going to be included in that? Do you think that's right? Do you? You ain't going to believe this. Well, you used to fit right here. I'd hold you up and say to your mother, this kid's going to be the best kid in the world. This kid's going to be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching every day. It was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame. Like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always going to love you no matter what. No matter what happens. You're my son, you're my blood. You're the best thing in my life. But until you start believing in yourself, you ain't gonna have a life. Don't forget to visit your mother. I've been knocked out once in my life, well, in a boxing match anyway. Uh, I was uh, in sixth grade, and my younger brother was in third grade. And, you know, I'm a lot bigger than my little brother, and definitely when we were that age. In sixth grade, I weighed about 150 pounds. My younger brother, who is in third grade, probably weighed 45 pounds. And uh, anyway, we used to always box each other with our fake boxing gloves, and it was no match, but it was still a lot of fun for us, and he kept coming back for more. Well, one time when we were boxing, uh, I was letting him hit me just so he would, <laughs> he would keep coming back and letting, letting me beat him up. And he punched me. I was letting him punch me, and he punched me in the back of the head, and, and I just went black. And it was quick, but I came back too. And uh, I don't know if uh, this is how you're feeling right now. Everything that's happening with the church merger and the transition into Restoration Church, and you're feeling a little bit like you've been knocked out, like you just got hit in the back of the head, uh, a little bit dizzy, vision's a little bit blurred, a little bit confused at your surroundings. And... Um, you know, you feel like you're staggering around. Maybe you're here and you, 
for whatever reason, you've never been to this church before, but here you are now, your first Sunday, and it is not a normal Sunday, and you feel a little lost, and it's a bit like getting a phone call from a, a bill collector. I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you, unfortunately, at a time in my life that happened to me, and it is it is nerve-wracking, it's, um, it's uncomfortable, and it's not anything you ever want to go through again. I remember when I was 16 years old, and I had come to church, and my life had been changed by Jesus so much. I'd always gone to church, but from age 14 to 16, my life was changed. And the pastor of my church, the pastor who was so key in helping me to know and experience the Lord, he stood up on a Sunday morning and he said, I'm resigning. And I cried so much. I was so sad about it. And, and it's hard in those moments to know what to do next. I remember some of my friends left the church and so it's just always a question, how do, you, how do you respond when those things happen? And maybe through this merger, you're wondering what you should do next. And the one thing that we always kind of jump to is, well, maybe I should quit. Maybe I should quit church. Maybe I should quit following Jesus. And maybe that's something that you felt and something that you've wondered just have these feelings like no one's ever going to compare. No one's ever going to compare to the pastor that I love. No one's ever going to compare to the pastor that helped me find Jesus. You know, it's never going to be the same. No one's ever, no one's ever, the church is never going to be the same. Never going to be like it was when so-and-so was leading us. And those things may be true, but is that a reason for us? To leave? Is that a reason for us to quit? The Apostle Paul encountered various times of his life in ministry where he, uh, where, where he didn't know if he could go on. Through difficult circumstances, difficult things that happened, and he was faced with a choice do I get up? Do I continue? Do I keep moving forward? I want to look at one of those passages. It was in Acts chapter 14, and I want to read to you. An account of Paul's life uh, is recorded in verses 19 through 23. It says, Then some Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowds to their side. They stoned Paul. They threw large rocks at him and dragged him out of town, thinking he was dead. But as the believers gathered around him, he got up and went back into the town. And the next day, he left with Barnabas for Derby. After preaching the good news in Derby and making many disciples, Paul and Barnabas returned to these three cities where they strengthened the believers. They encouraged them to continue in the faith, reminding them that we must suffer many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Paul and Barnabas also appointed elders in every church. With prayer and fasting, they turned the elders over to the care of the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Let's talk about what just happened in what we just read. Jews, are travel Jews had traveled to where Paul and Barnabas were preaching and teaching people about Jesus. They traveled over 62 miles to bring opposition against Paul. That's a, that's a long trip, uh, even with a car. And they show up, they're, they're, they are conspiring against Paul. It says they won a crowd over to them, and then they attacked Paul. They stoned him. It was so brutal that there was no life left in him, and they supposed him to be dead. He, they had so brutalized him that there was no life left in him. They dragged him out of town where um, he would be uh, cleaned up by vultures or wild animals. Talk about feeling knocked out. 
No one, not you, not me, not any of those disciples, not Barnabas, no one's going to blame Paul for quitting right there. If he wasn't dead and, and he came to, no one's going no one's gonna to fault him for taking vacation time, for, for uh, uh, you know, for just saying, I'm not going to be apostle, an apostle anymore. I'm not going to keep preaching um, Jesus so publicly. No one's going to fault him for that. No one's going to accuse him of quitting. I mean, he had just been brutalized. But in verse number 20, what happened? Paul got up. He didn't just get up. He, he suffered this beating. He'd been stoned to the point of death. He didn't just get back up, but he got back up and returned back into the city where they had just attacked him, where they had just tried to kill him. That he should be able to do this after he was just left for dead was a miracle. This is, this, he, I mean, he has practically been resurrected from the dead. If you consider how, um, how people were stoned to death, um, it, makes it, it just helps us to understand and, uh, and really what was going on here. They didn't just throw some pieces of, of gravel at him. What would happen is attackers would throw as large a stone as they could lift and bash it, throw it against the person's head. Large enough and with enough force to fracture the skull and, and, and to begin to cause bleeding and, and brain hemorrhaging. And then if the person was still alive there, a crowd would grow, would gather around and they would continue to throw large stones at the person until the person had no sign of life left in him. If the person would continue, if the person would continue to move, they would keep throwing stones at them until they were dead. That's what happened to Paul. He is laying there on the ground, bloody, injured, nearly dead. And he gets back up and goes back into that city. The same city, the same people, the same potential for harm. People could see him and, and say, I, you know, I thought we killed you and reattack him moments later. Why? Why did he do that? Why do you and I keep moving forward? Keep, why do we keep after the mission? Why do we keep serving Jesus and keep following Jesus and keep living for him when things happen that are uncomfortable for us, when, things, when churches change, when leadership changes, when decisions are made that we don't like, when, when bad things happen to us, why do we keep following Jesus? Why do you stay here and become a part of Restoration Church? Why do you learn to love a new pastor? Why do you learn new methods of ministry? You keep moving forward because your purpose is too important. What is our purpose? Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, the words of Jesus. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Your purpose is so others know Jesus. We can't forget that, and we can't ignore that. Think about Paul as he lay there on the ground, a bloody pile of human. What was going on in his head and in his heart in that moment? As he lay there for dead I can't quit. People need to know about Jesus. And slowly and difficult, and, and with much difficulty, we assume, he gets back up. Give me the strength 
to reach just one more. Fight rose up in his heart. The resurrection power of Jesus rose up in his heart. The anointing of the Holy Ghost rose up within him. I am not going to be intimidated. I'm not going to let anybody under any circumstances keep me from sharing the good news of Jesus. People need to know you keep moving forward because of your purpose. It's too important to give up. It's too important to quit. There are too many people who need to know. You keep moving forward because you're not in this alone. We must strengthen each other. You need to be here because the others around you need you to be here. Paul, after he's been brutalized in verse number 22, he was strengthening and encouraging others to remain true to the faith. He had just gotten pulverized, and he's encouraging other people. And they had earlier gathered around him and encouraged him. They prayed for Paul's healing. First Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. Too often our default is to tear each other down. We complain about things we don't like. We try to make sure we hurt other people. Someone does something new, we just make sure to tell them that didn't work. Never mind the fact that they were trying to reach people. We just were just so happy that it didn't work. When a person is down, church, we don't gather around them and begin to kick them and say, let's make sure we finish you off. No, as believers, we gather around to protect and to pray. We gather around our pastor and we protect and pray for him. We gather around each other as believers and we protect and pray for each other. We encourage each other. You keep moving forward because you're an example. First, you keep moving forward because your purpose is too important. You keep moving forward because we, you're not in this alone. We need each other. And then you keep moving forward because you're an example. There are other people watching you. And they're making the decision on how they respond based on how you respond. And so the believers who saw Paul get attacked and saw him uh, um, brutalized, what example did Paul set for them? Get back up, get back in the city, keep preaching Jesus. Every one of those believers were deeply impacted. We are brave. We are courageous. We are going to do everything we can to reach just one more. Paul and Barnabas returned to other cities where they had been beaten before. Think about what that took. We, we get food poisoning and we never go back to Taco Bell ever again. But here are these guys. Their lives have been put in jeopardy. And they willingly return. They willingly put themselves at risk because of the mission. They took a risk. They trusted Jesus. And for us, those of us who have already made the decision to follow Jesus, you've been following Jesus for a long time, these transitions, newer believers are watching you. How do you pray for the new pastor? How do you support the new ministries? And they're trying to figure out how they're supposed to, be resp how they're supposed to respond. You are discipling other believers with your attitude and with your actions in these moments. They look to us to see how we respond. People who don't know Jesus, and there may be some in the room. They're looking to the church. Is this a church that really knows Jesus? Or is this a church that is going to be divided that's going to attack each other. We remember, it's not about the name of, on the sign out in front of the church building. Everything we do is about the name above every other name. It's about Jesus. 
We don't quit because he didn't quit. We don't give up because he didn't give up. We don't bail out on others because he didn't bail out on us. We think about this illustration, you know, this boxing metaphor and this, uh, you know, keep moving forward illustration. It's when we're moving forward that we're able to make an impact. If, if, you're, if you're back on your heels and, and you're getting knocked backwards, you can't punch, you can't make an impact. But it's when you're moving forward that you're able to make an impact. When the church is moving forward, that is the only time we can make an impact for the kingdom of God. When the church is moving forward, that is the only time we can make an impact against the kingdom of darkness. A life walking in the spirit cannot be stopped. And you, as you follow Jesus, as you keep moving forward in his relationship, as you keep moving forward serving him, as you keep moving forward and reaching just one more, you will make an impact. This church will make an impact. There's nothing that can stop it. Let me pray for you. Jesus, no matter what happens next, this church is going to move forward. It's going to keep moving forward. Because Jesus, you will keep moving forward. There's never been, uh, uh, ever since you um, uh, ascended to heaven, there has never been a year where the church was smaller than the year before. Year after year after year for over 2,000 years, you have built your church. And that is not going to stop. And right now, Jesus, we align our hearts to you and to your mission and to your purposes. We're not going to give up. If we get beat down, we're going to pray, we're going to get back up, and we're going to go reach people again. We're not quitting. Jesus, we give this building to you. We give our ministries to you. We give our dreams to you. We lay them in your hands. We say, do with them what you will. But use me and use this building and use these tools for your glory. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.